Proverbs chapter 24, a study in Proverbs. By wisdom a house is built. Be not envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their hearts devise violence, and their lips talk of trouble. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is full of strength, and a man of knowledge enhances his might. For by wise guidance you can wage your war, and in abundance of counselors there is victory. Wisdom is too high for a fool. In the gate he does not open his mouth. Whoever plans to do evil will be called a schemer. The devising of folly is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to mankind. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, Behold, we did not know this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his work? My son, eat honey, for it is good, and the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. Know that wisdom is such to your soul. If you find it, there will be a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Lie not in wait as a wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous. Do no violence to his home. For the righteous falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and let not your heart be glad when he stumbles. Let the Lord see it and be displeased and turn away his anger from him. Fret not yourself because of evildoers, and be not envious of the wicked. For the evil man has no future, as the lamp of the wicked will be put out. My son, fear the Lord and the king, and do not join with those who do otherwise. For disaster will arise suddenly from them, and who knows the ruin that will come from them both. These also are the sayings of the wise. Partiality in judging is not good. Whoever says to the wicked, You are in the right, will be cursed by peoples, abhorred by nations. But those who rebuke the wicked will have delight, and a good blessing will come upon them. Whoever gives an honest answer kisses the lips. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field, and after that, build your house. Be not a witness against your neighbor without cause, and do not deceive with your lips. Do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I will pay the man back for what he has done. I pass by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense. And behold, it was all overgrown with thorns. The ground was covered with nettles, and its stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and considered it. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. Our proverb for the day is verses 3 and 4. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A popular trend that started a few years ago was that of the three-dimensional pictures. They were random shapes that didn't seem to have an order until you crossed your eyes, so to speak, and when your focus came upon at just the right depth, you saw a two-dimensional plot suddenly become a three-dimensional picture with depth and character. Music can be that way as well. Three notes individually on their own have a distinct sound. Yet when just the right three notes come together, they form a major chord and become lovely and so much more than they could be on their own. So it is when individual elements come together to become so much more than they could be alone. Metal, glass, and various synthetic articles come together to form a car. Wood, stone, and paint alone may be valuable, But when they come together with purpose, planning, and perspiration, they make a house. Yet there is more here for us to consider. 
A house is a house for sure, and it takes wisdom to build that structure. But let's transcend the physical and consider that which Solomon is expressing in this proverb. It contains more than meets the eye. It is apparent that what he seeks to convey is that of the godly life, the godly home, the godly kingdom. Could not this proverb apply universally to anything we desire to build? If it was by wisdom that the Lord built the universe and everything therein in Proverbs 3.19, could we do better by our own designs? Of course not. The threefold manner of what that process is built, established, and filled. These are done with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. How perfectly these fit together. Whether one has been raised in a godly home or not, that individual can, by the wisdom from God's Word, build a home. By understanding of those scriptures, that home can become established, and with knowledge, further fill every aspect of the home. A home is more than mere building products. A marriage is more than mere vows and rings. A family is more than producing offspring. For anyone in the world can bring about such things. And that's evident by the rampant, dysfunctional nature of far too many broken homes and intact homes. Lives built around the acquisition of wealth, possessions, and meaningless pursuits that teeter on the brink of ruin with every wind of change that blows through. But that which is built by this threefold effort of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge withstands the storms of life. One dimensional lies built on the sandy foundation of get, 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 are those Jesus spoke of in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7, verses 26 and 27. But the three dimensional life of depth, breadth, and height built on godly principles withstands the rain, wind, and floods that beat against it. What kind of building materials are you constructing your life with? And Lord willing, we'll meet again tomorrow.